Doing Justin here today. We are checking out If It Makes You Happy by the wonderful Cheryl Crow. This is a fantastic song, it's got one of the best kind of laid back grooves that you'll ever find. A really good one to be playing along with the original recording for once you learn it because just trying to cop that nice lazy feeling the way the, the, the rhythm in this song is really really special. A uh, big thank you to Selena for joining me for the intro as well. There um, now. This song is kind of based around a, a spread out G chord. And what I mean by that is that you're using just your third and fourth fingers on opposite sides of the guitar neck, okay? So for real beginners, this can be a little bit tricky. In fact, I think we'll get to a close up and I'll show you how to get this one down. So I'm sure most of you have learned to play G chord like this using fingers one, two, and three. Okay, perfectly fine way of playing G works nearly all the time. Some of you may have even discovered that you can use the third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings in the third fret to give you this other G, which is a little bit more kind of rock and roll used for stuff like Green Day and that kind of, you know, a little bit rockier sounding, okay? I don't want to go into the theory reasons why, but it's just a little bit more rock and roll. But there's another way of playing a G chord, which is probably a little bit tricky for your average beginner, but well worth it because it's really going to work on your stretch there. So to play this one, we only use our third and fourth fingers, right? Fingers one and two are just staying out of the way. I'm kind of stretching them out of the way sometimes so you can get a clear view of the other two fingers, but normally they'll just kind of hang around like that. So we start with the third finger in the third fret of the thicker string, and then we want little finger to go down in the third fret of the thinnest string, okay? That's it, that's the only ones that we need. What you're gonna find is the underneath of the third finger is gonna be muting the fifth string, and that's good, because we want the third fret, muted fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string will be open, and then the third fret on the thinnest string. Now the really cool thing about this is it gives us our first and second fingers free to do other stuff. And you find over the years that you're going to find lots of little kind of... You can do all sorts of little kind of tricks with those two fingers to make up cool little riffs. But in this particular song, we're starting off by putting the first finger down in the first fret of the second string, and the second finger down in the second fret of the third string. That would be the shape. So we start by doing bass, chord. Now when I say bass, I'm just hitting mainly the thinner strings. We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in a second. But thick strings, chord, then thick, chord, thick, chord. And we put down that first and second fingers. This would be down, 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 up, down, up. It's the first bar of the riff, okay? Again, we'll be one, two, Three and four and one, two, three, four again. Bass chord, bass chord, bass chord. With that little sus chord coming on the and after four. Now the second bar, we leave those fingers down, and we're going to have one, two. Okay, for the, so bass note of the chord on beat one, another strum of the thinner strings on beat two, and then we've got this three and. Okay, so this will be a down strum with the fingers down still on the thinner strings, then an up strum, we lift those fingers off, a down strum, we put that second finger back down on and then lift it up again for the last strum. So the second bar, one, two, three and four and. Okay, that second bar again, down, 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 up, down, up. Be the strumming 
Okay, we're gonna look at the strumming hand in a second, don't panic. Just wanna make sure you get this hand sorted out first. So the, the count, one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, let's have a little look at this strumming pattern. Let me just play it first of all. Okay, what's really important is that you see that my hand is moving consistently. Okay, what happens is that I'm actually kind of targeting different areas of the string set. So the very first drum, I'm mainly aiming for the thicker strings. Right? I'm not doing like individually picking one note. I'm just trying to strum but concentrating on the thick strings. On the second down strum, I'm concentrating on the thinner strings. So we have bass, chord. Then the f rest of the first bar we have one, uh, three and four and. Okay, which would be bass strings, chord, bass strings, Chord, and that's where we're going to put that down our little nine sus thing. So we have one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, that again. So bass, chord, but with a down strum. Then bass, up, bass, up. Okay, it might sound a bit complicated now, but once you get into the groove of it, it's actually not particularly difficult to do this. Just be aware of where you're kind of targeting, okay? One, two, three, and four, and one, two, then three, and four, and. And you can see now I'm just targeting the thinnest four strings for that last part. Little riff. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. On the original recording, there's an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar playing a very similar part, okay? So when you're listening to it, if you can, try and get your ears out to be able to segregate and hear the two independently of each other if you can. Very good practice. But what you're going to find is that they're both varying up the strumming a little bit, so it doesn't have to be exactly set one way. There's a little bit of freedom for you to experiment and see how you like to play it, okay? Now, uh, if you weren't going to do the riff, Okay, if, you, if you're finding the riff a little bit stretchy, I mean, it kind of makes a song. I'd, I'd tend to struggle along with it and try and get it if it would be my advice. But if you really don't want to play it, uh, a nice variation on the riff that kind of brings out the feeling of it, in, in, in that brings out the, the sound of the riff just via strumming, would be to miss out the down strum on beat four in the first bar of the pattern, okay? Uh, and that would make it this. Down, 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 up, up, down, down. Okay, the riffs are kind of a big deal, I think, in this one, and, and it does sound better to have it in there, but it is also a little bit tricky and requires some pretty gnarly finger stretching. And this really is such a great groove that if you have to leave out the riff and just play along with the original recording just to work on your strumming a little bit, then that would be a good idea. 
One thing that I would suggest that you have a go at, just because it's really, really great exercise, is to mute all of the strings with your fretting hand, just so you get a muted click, and then play along with the original recording, and really try and feel like you're playing with the band, and try and play along exactly with the right, what we call a time feel, okay? Because it's this real lazy, I kind of, I almost want to be asleep when I'm playing this. It's got such a lovely, just really laid back groove. It's such a great pocket. I, I'm I really, it's one of my favorite rhythm pockets of all time. I always find that I start speeding it up, even when I played it with Selena there at the little intro thing. I keep trying to kind of make it go a bit faster, but trying to force it to keep laid back is just really, really nice. I definitely recommend you trying to play along with that muted thing. So let's have a little look at the song structure and we're going to simplify the strumming right down to four down strums to the bar, okay? So we're not adding the riff or anything just yet. So uh, we're starting off with a G chord for one bar, then the sus2, sus4 variation, that's putting the first and second fingers down, then back to the G, and then the sus2, sus4. Then we got G in the verse, the sus2, sus4 long way from G the sus2, sus4 back to G put on a poncho sus2, four for mosquitoes back to G until I was thirsty for C now that's a really important little sequence there right so we got a bar of G just speeding it up now then sus4 Sus2, Sus4. Back to G. The Sus2, Sus4. Back to G. Sus2, Sus4. And then this last time, one bar of G. And then one bar of C. And then it does the same thing again. Two stiff thrift star jungles. Nice of it to put a tongue twister in the middle of it. Found your animal's rifle and Marilyn shampoo and Benny Goodman's corset and see. Well, okay, see again. I made this deal. I see you. I'd never give up. To simplify that chord progression, we've got G to G sus2 sus4, which is the main riff. We play that three times, then we've got G to C for one bar each, okay? That's the main chord sequence. It plays that again all of the way through, and then we've got this little bit that goes C, D, C, D, okay? Which is, if you like, a little pre-chorus. That's that, well, okay, I made this up. I promised you I'd never give up. And on that last D, you just want to do down, up, down, like one and two, three, four. And then we get, that's where we're coming into the chorus, okay? So let's do that one more time through that verse, and then we'll go into the chorus. But I'll tell you actually the chorus uh, chords, just so you're, uh, you make sense of that. The chorus is going A minor, C, G, D, A minor, C, and then we're back to the riff again, okay? so. A minor C, G, D, A minor C, and back to the riff. Let's play it from verse one. I belong a long way from here. I put on a poncho and played for mosquitoes and drank till I was thirsty, here's the sea. And then it's that again. We went searching through thrift store jungles. Can't believe she put a tongue twister in there. So difficult to sing that line. Found your animal's rifle and Marilyn shampoo and Benny Goodman's corset and see and see again. I made this deal. I see God that I'd never give thee If it makes you a minor To see It can't be that G D If it makes you a minor Then see 
And why the hell are you so cheap? I'll go back to that bit. Okay, so it can be played simplified just with the easy down strumming. And I do recommend that you have a go at doing that a few times with the original recording before you try and add in the riff. So when we want to add in the riff and of course the associated strumming pattern, there's one little kind of quirk on this song, which is this C chord that happens in the verses. So it's doing the G to the G sus4, G sus2, sus4 thing. It does that three times and it does G to C. And on that particular C, on the original recording, it uses this strumming pattern down, up, down, up. Okay, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Now, I've got to confess, when I'm usually playing this, I don't worry so much about an exact strumming pattern there. In fact, quite commonly, I'm going to be using down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. The old faithful strumming pattern, just because it kind of works for me. And the main thing with this song is getting that kind of riff down. So if you don't fancy adding that down, up, down, up, up, in that point, at that point on those C chords, then don't worry about it. And definitely down, down, up, up, down works really great for the choruses and that little bridgey part before, the little pre-chorus going into the chorus. So let me have a play through that right from the very beginning. So we start with the riff. hard song for a bloke to sing this one especially there's a big jump there into the chorus it's kind of a bit of a tricky one to sing this one oh well for me but yeah hopefully you're getting the idea now but all of these sort of songs the strumming pattern you know there's a kind of a set one there for the for the verses and for that particular riff but the rest of it just try and feel it out a little bit and playing along with the original recording like i said will really help you kind of lock into that nice lazy groove that this song has now there's one other section actually that we need to discuss which is this little interlude part um where at the end of the third chorus Instead of going back to the riff on the G chord, it goes to an E minor chord for two bars with the strumming pattern 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3 and 4 and that strumming pattern down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3 and 4 and okay so the, the, the little interlude is E minor 1, 2, 3 and to A minor, same strumming pattern, two bars, back to E minor, two, three and four and for two bars again, then to C chord, one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four and then we're back to the riff. And that's it, that's the only other kind of new part of the song that you need. And it's such a good one, this one. I really, really recommend trying to practice up that riff and, and trying to cop that lazy chord feel, you know, the, the, the time feel rather, because it's such a, it's just so nice. And I know I'm going on about it a little bit, but I really am um, super impressed with this one, how, how laid back it feels. And it's, it's something a lot of beginners really struggle with is trying to cop that kind of laid back feel. They always feel like they're kind of, pushing a little bit and, and this is a good song for learning to kind of sit back with a tune you know it's loads of fun wonderful song as well so uh, i hope you enjoy playing this one i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon take care of yourselves bye bye